Hello and welcome to a reverse tutorial where I don't have the answers, so I'm hoping that you do. Um, I'm going to post these questions in the description, and if anybody has good answers, I will post them uh, right after that. So obviously, don't answer a question if it's already been answered. Check the description first. Uh, first, let me show you this animation that I made, which I'm proud of, but I had some difficulty creating it. Uh, I'll show you why. It's just Let's just check this out first. So bottom line, there are some exceptions, but if you need speed and accuracy from your display, consider buying a monitor. And if screen size, good contrast, and a more cinematic experience are what you're going for, then there's nothing wrong with trying a larger TV as your daily driver. So bottom Okay, so there it is. Now, there were little, uh, little uh, sound effects when these hit, and that actually adds quite a lot. I guess I could have added some squeaking or whatever. But uh, check out this insane, there it is. <laughs> that's the, that's the uh, movement curve. You can see the little bounce at the end there. Actually, it's premature. Really, it should have bounced when this was here. Whatever. And it slowly settles in, and then another one hits, and another one hits, another one hits, and then it settles back down. And then this is a little bit too fast. Whatever. So that was all good. And in fact, I figured out, oh, that's the wrong control. I figured out how, see this? How to get those plates to remain stationary even as the rest of it moves around. And then that way I didn't have to like duplicate all this and put it onto the plates themselves because uh, I found this little code, where is it? Here, 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 that's it. That's all you need. Um, and then it'll do the parent, whatever it's parented to, it'll, it'll reverse it according to that transformation point, or whatever they call it, anchor point, and uh, it's just hunky-dory. Yeah. So my first question is, yeah, <laughs> are there shortcuts to expand and contract entire layers? Because I, I swear, like I'm so, I, I'm always, always like micromanaging these horrible, horrible little triangles, and they're so small to click on. Um, I believe it's called twirling and untwirling. But like this is constant, and people say, "Oh, it's fine. You just have to press like, you know, A and S and P or whatever to get to the thing that you need." Guess what? I need more than just that. Sometimes I need to go into the text thing, and open up all these little twirlies. Okay, this is a trick question though, because I did figure this out using Auto Hotkey. But I want shortcuts in the program. There's nothing. There's nothing here that does it. As far as I can tell, twirl, preserve solo. I mean, let's try that. Shift, blork. No, whatever. Um, where is it? Shift, comma. I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, I made shortcuts. See? Look at how great I am. Wait, it's not working. All oh, right. Dorp, de dorp, de dorp. Dorp, 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 dorp. Look at how great that is. Dorp, 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 dorp. This is how After Effects should work. See that? Open. I want to, you know, do stuff. I can't. So I'll give you guys the code. This is all that it is in my multiple whatever uh, keyboard assignments. You also need to include this here. You don't necessarily have to do it this way at all. But anyway, here's the code. Basically, all that it does is, uh, let me go here, support files. I took all these little teeny tiny screenshots of all the ways that the arrows can look because they can be like, on the first layer, they have this like pseudo selection on them. And then on the second layer, they have a darker background. And then if you have it selected, then it's a brighter background, whatever. Somebody's texting me. Uh, I'm not going to look at it. Um, so it just searches for those, and if it finds it, it'll click on it. And it's a very specific area in which it is searching. So anyway, there you go. I really, 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 really just want to have this as a real feature in the program because I shouldn't have to code this myself. Um, if this doesn't exist, please submit a request for it, and so will I because, again, I'm so, so sick of, uh, I'm not really showing this off very well, of, of twiddling with these horrible, horrible little triangles. 
Okay, second question. What what is my second question? Blurp, blurp, blurp. Can I nest the distort transform effect? Okay, so <coughs> um, what have we got here? Ah, yes. Okay, so how I made these happen was really dumb. First of all, I don't even know like what you're supposed to do to nest these on top of everything because they are nested. Like I can show you. Uh, whoop. I can show you. Oh, that's the wrong one. Like, obviously, they all move with it, right? Like, I didn't obviously manually <clears throat> uh, move all of those. But let me show you. Let's see. I've got the microphone in my way, so it's kind of hard to see. Come on, baby. Don't let me down. Okay. So, I have the text and I have the brick in two separate layers. I should not have done this. What I should have done was take this and nest it, uh, pre-compose. Uh, whatever. And then I wouldn't have to deal with it in the way that I am. But just for the sake of stuff. Um, like, first of all, when it's falling, you don't really notice this. But because this is already moving, it's actually falling slightly faster than it should be. Because it's already nested against this when it's in the air. And I don't know if there's a good way to get around that. I mean, I guess I could split the layer and then only have it become uh, parented when it touches the next brick. But of course, it also like bounces a little bit. Uh, anyway, I should have nested, precomposed these both together. But let me show you if I delete this and I put on the bounce alternative. OK, okay uh, maybe right here. So this was my idea to, OK, actually, first of all, sorry, this, this gets complicated. Let me put on the bounce. So this is a preset that I made using the transform effect, it's very, very important, from another brick. If I put it on this brick, look what happens. Oh, it blomps down right over there. Because like this one here, this uh, color accuracy, is like the one that I copied it from. And obviously, it's nested to this guy, not that guy. Um, the problem is now it's all the way over there. So what I could do, I suppose, is just click and move it over. And because it's After Effects, yes, it does actually save. Because I have these selected, it moves all of them over. Thank you, After Effects. Premiere does not work that way. It will only change the single uh, thingy that you're on. So that's one solution, I suppose. Uh, now, the other solution problem, whatever, that I had was if you go here to the bounce alternative, let me just show you uh, what that did. This is using the, oh, hang on, I, I, my microphone, I can't see, using the transform effect. Why do I already have one on here? Whatever. I think I, uh, is that a minus button? How do I delete this? Delete? Cool. Okay. So the transform effect is in the distort category. This is really great because you can have multiple actions, multiple movements on a single object at the same time. Very, very important for animation for reasons like this, where I have two types of motion. But the thing is, it doesn't nest that. Is there a way to get the cinematic look text nested to this? position. Not this position, this one. Is that possible? I'm sure it probably is because when I look at uh, this guy, whoop, see I'm still I'm still opening them manually even though I have the shortcuts now. Uh, where the heck am I? When I look at this guy, uh -huh, I've got this and surely there's like an expression that I can use that'll tell it, okay, please, please also parent to this effect. So that's my second question. Let's go out to the third question. Um, let me fix this first, actually. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to do something stupid. Bounce alternative. Boop, boop. Ah! Okay, that didn't work. 
Uh, whatever. Let's let's just undo. Is that working now? Yes. The timing is wrong, but whatever. Okay. Uh, question three. So I did this all manually. Like every single one of these. Well, let's see if I can do this by fancy shortcuts. Yeah. Every single one of these, like I manually. Um, where's this one? Oh, that's a brick. What? Oh, there it is. Um, did. But surely, like, I can just set this up and give it physics, right? Where it's like, okay, this has a certain weight. It has a certain speed of gravity. Um, and then this, like, I don't know if, if that's even possible to have a fake balance. That would be actually really difficult, I think, to, to do. But, like, can I just, like, throw a bunch of blocks onto the screen and have them, like, bounce off of each other and settle in some way? I, I hear that there's plugins. I see that there's plugins. I don't know which one of the best one is. So if I can just like get some some physics going, where I don't even have to do any animation, that would be great. Thanks. Next question: Can I create a custom curve to be used as the easy ease for whatever whatever another easy out? Okay. So here's my issue. Uh, oh boy, just here. Look, look. We can we can get rid of all of this crap because we have the shortcuts. Wow, amazing. How convenient is that? Okay. Um, let's say that I want to, oh, this is, this is obnoxious. I'm just gonna add, oh geez, I don't even know the shortcut for new, new uh, layer, new object. No, shape layer, no, solid. Lol, I don't even know the shortcut. Don't even know it. I think I have it on the stream deck. Okay, anyway. Let's say that I have this square. And I want to position, position. I want to do that. If I use, oh, hang on, we got to get the, uh, thingy up here. Oh, Lord. Uh, that's not what I want right now. If I use easy ease out, guess what? Wait a minute. What the heck? No. Easy ease in. Huh. Easy. Uh, I know the shortcuts for this. Easy ease in. Yes. Okay. This is, oh, I hate this. Why? Why does it do it here as well? I told it only this one. I said, ease in this guy, not this guy. Why are you also giving me a little bit of an ease right in here? I don't want that. It's like I always have to go here and do that. Okay, that's how Flash works, where uh, you would say, like, ease negative 100 or whatever. And it would only affect this. And look, even though I got rid of this, it's still, oh, it still has a little bit of a funky curve to it, where it's like going, you see that a little bit up here? I don't understand. I don't get it. I only want you to mess with this one. Uh, undo a few times. Uh, and then let's try it again on this guy. Easy ease out. And there it is again. Why are you messing with the curve right here? I don't want that. Whoa. Actually, let's see what happens. Is there a shortcut to go into the graph editor? I, I bet there probably is. Let's check. Graph, graph, edit, show high graph editor, shift F3, cool. Shift F3, all right. Uh, let's see what happens when we do easy ease out. Yeah, it still does it, oh, I don't want that. Can I create a custom ease like easy ease out and a custom easy ease in where it won't do this horrible thing that I hate and I want nothing to do with. If I wanted this to be eased, guess what? I would tell it to ease it. Okay, that's my question. And final question. This is, uh, you know, it's a fundamental thing. I don't know uh, why I haven't come across this yet. I don't remember my own shortcuts. Um, when I, actually, let's open that up. When I make a thing and it's playing, it doesn't like. Let, let me just show you. But if you need, you need speed and speed and accuracy from your display.
Notice how awful that was. Even though it has all this green all the way here, it is refusing to play at one time speed because it's like, oh, I need to finish everything and then I'll show you at one time speed. What is that and how can I make it like do one time speed until it like hits here and then of course it would slow down. That's what I would prefer. Um, is there, is it in here? Can, um, I just, I don't understand how this works. Also, oh boy, like these little, I, I, know, I know that that's probably not a setting or an option or whatever, but I hate, whoa, I hate these like little tiny boxes where it can scrunch it up and you don't even know. Like, look, why is there an inner box? Who thought, who thought that was a good idea? What an awful, awful idea. Oh shit. What, hey, I can't even scroll. What the heck? Oh my goodness. This is so bad. And now, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, hang on. There we go. And, and, there, there. Oh, no. There. See, see how awful that is? Okay, feature request. Please fix that, Adobe. Thank you. Okay, um, so somebody tell me what is up with the weird preview. I set it to enter or return because spacebar, as far as I would like, is for moving this around. So I can't have spacebar be this and also be play when I'm over here. That's, it, it just gets awful. So maybe I should do something other than enter, but whatever. Hang a monitor and, and if screen size, good, good contrast and, now and it'll more play nice, cinematic. So tell me what's up with that. What is that called? What, how do I put the settings in here? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, those are my questions. Thank you for watching and having patience with me through these troubled times. <laughs> Goodbye.